Pública. Good day and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host for today, Jacques Kingston Compton. And today we're going to talk about the nutritional benefits of breastfeeding. And I'm going to have my two guests introduce themselves. Hi, I am Azealia Glass-George, head of the dietary department at the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. My name is Lania Japier. Um, I'm the nutritionist at Central Hospital. Uh, no so problem. on a previous program where we also spoke about breastfeeding, uh, I learned that I learned a, a, of something called exclusive breastfeeding. Could you tell the viewers a little bit about that and what it is? And, and either one of you, uh, Miss Glass, you want to go first? Sure. So exclusive breastfeeding, as the name suggests, would mean only breastfeeding your baby, um, and we normally recommend for the first six months of life you exclusively breastfeed and then you can continue up until a year but just only breast milk for the first six months of life. But well, why the, the first six months? Is that the most? That's the most formative time for the baby so um, and also to you find that the baby's systems are developing and breast milk has everything that the baby needs so you don't want to try to introduce other things beforehand because you can also cause detrimental things to the baby if you do that. Uh, detrimental, like, give, can you give me an example? Sure. So your baby's um, gastrointestinal tract, your GI tract, um, you can get problems with the GI tract if you start introducing things too early to the baby. Oh. So I know we tend to like to give the children early toloma or something like that, mm. but breast milk has everything that the baby needs for the first six for months the first of six life. Months. Yes. Um, does it have to stop at six months? What's the, the longest amount of time you could breastfeed your child or should you? Um, you can breastfeed your child for as long as you can basically either you have milk production so as long as you have milk production you can breastfeed so you have certain persons which go up until three years some persons do four years um, but it's difficult when mothers go back to work so we realize these things so we encourage at least six months and then a year mm -hmm. um, after that then it is as you can do it but yeah. it's still recommended to continue the breastfeeding for as long as you possibly can. Okay, uh, Ms. Japier, uh, how many times a day would you say that a mother should breastfeed? We recommend breastfeeding on demand. Mm -hmm. So the baby will give the mother cues as to when it's feeding time. And how, how long would you say one feeding sh would last? Like how do you know when the baby is full? The baby would pull away from the breast and pretty much sleeps most of them. Okay. But the baby is the key indicator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is there any um, particular routine or diet that the mother has to adopt uh, during the, the breastfeeding phase? Yes, we recommend the mother maintain a healthy, balanced diet. Balanced in that she eats um, what we see is six food groups. Mm. So she includes in her diet the legumes, food from animals, from fruits, uh, vegetables, fats and oils, and her staples, of course. And could you in the right amount, sorry. In the right amount. Yeah. What, what would be the right amount exactly? Okay. With the fruits, she can include at least two servings for the day. I'd li would limit one cup of 100% fruit juice. For the vegetables, she can do three servings, mm -hmm. um, either one serving being dark green leafy vegetables or orange. Um, there's also legumes, um, food from animals, so your tuna, your um, chicken, your turkey, you can do two to three servings a day. Um, dairy, your low-fat dairy, non-fat or non-fat dairy, you can do at least three servings a day. 
Um, and just to, mm. sorry, just to add to what mm. she's saying, um, to understand like what a portion is, or what a serving is mm. rather, yeah. if you're looking at fruits, um, look at a banana, a small banana that weighs about four ounces is considered a, a fruit serving. Or if you do like watermelon and you chop it up, about one and a quarter cups of watermelon would be considered a fruit serving. Or like a small gala apple mm -hmm. would be a fruit serving. Um, it's good to understand the portions so that and I know some persons say, I'm not a, 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 like a chef, so why do you want me to try to measure? But measuring would help to put things in perspective and also help with the calorie intake that you should reach. Mm -hmm. So it's good to know the portions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In terms of like the legumes, a half a cup mm -hmm. of um, peas and beans, your lentils, and so would be considered a serving that's cooked. And in terms of food from animals, you find that um, like your, your lean meats and fish, a three ounce portion um, would be considered a serving in some groups and in other groups an ounce is considered a serving. Yeah. So it's good to just know like the total number mm -hmm. of ounces that you should take in for mm -hmm. the day. So anywhere like six ounces or so for a day would be sufficient um, for a breastfeeding mother. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's two <coughs> things that you did touch on a little while ago that I, I want to kind of discuss. Uh, one of them would be the calorie intake but before we get to that um, you mentioned that um, you kind of touched on women, you know, being having difficulty, I guess, being able to work and breastfeed. Um, is that a common problem? Um, yes, because normally you have about like three months out, and then when you go back to work, you know, it's difficult to try to balance of uh, feeding, pumping, and um, you know, just ensuring that your baby gets what they need and you can get um, stressed out because you you rushing over to get to work and you still have to make sure that you have enough milk and pump to feed your baby before mm -hmm. and then you um, try to feed when you come back home so it's 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 difficult for the mother um, but we encourage the mothers if you pump and then you saw the saw the milk you know in the freezer then it helps as well Oh, you store. You actually have to store it in the freezer, not in a in a fridge. Right. So it depends on if you're producing a good bit of milk, then you can store the milk in the freezer, and then you would just warm it up when you need to feed the baby. Um, label of what? Yes. Yes. You label it and right. and you date it yeah. and, and whatnot so that you know, you know how long you can utilize that milk for. But that's a good practice, and it really helps mothers out if they do that. Because you can, if you don't um, pump sometimes often enough, then you find that the breast can get engorged mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're at work and it's really uncomfortable. And so, yeah, it's good to do that. Um, is there, are there cases where uh, mothers might have difficulty in producing milk, maybe in the early stages? Yes, for some persons, there may be issues with um, production. But what we advise um, is to get your baby to latrine properly and have your baby suckle. So the more that your baby suckles, the more you produce milk. And that should help you um, out. In addition to what she just mentioned, mm -hmm. um, milk production can be hidden, be hindered uh, with stress. Uh, the mother is not properly hydrated. Uh, um, the support from the dad, uh, emotional support. So all those things would help with what she's talking about with milk production. Well, I actually want to, I'll, we'll touch on that after we come back from the break, uh, the emotional support from the father. But we're due for our first break. Please stay with us. You're watching Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. Please stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. We are working parents. And we breastfed both babies exclusively. Mother's breast milk is naturally the best milk for baby. Love yourself and love your baby. Breastfeeding saves me money and it's free. Every moment I breastfeed strengthens the bond between me and my baby. I breastfed twin boys and lost all my baby fat. We were breastfed! And we have breast milk power. I am Pastor Alvin and I support breastfeeding. For more information, call the Nutrition Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness at 468-5359.
Welcome back to Issues and Answers. Uh, we're talking about the nutritional benefits of breastfeeding. Uh, now, there are two questions that I, I want to ask. Uh, one, our cameraman, Vibert, <laughs> asked us off camera, but we'll, we'll get to that in a while. Um, you were speaking about emotional support that fathers can provide. Could you uh, touch a little bit on that? Well, it's recommended that the father be involved in the, well, the last lap of the pregnancy. There's a counseling session about lactation. Um, he should really attend that consultation and learn about breastfeeding and lactation so that the mother, when the baby gets there, the mother can take breaks, the mother can learn more, learn more about the stressful routine she's, you know, she's faced with. Mm -hmm. And um, that would allow her to be more relaxed and the milk flow will be forthcoming. Do you find it's a case where a lot of fathers don't necessarily provide emotional support in, in, your, exper in your professional experience? Or do fathers really step up when they have to? Uh, some fathers, they do verbalize that, you know, moms are built for that. Mm. And so financial support probably, but uh, some of them do say, you know, that's all, that, that's the job. Okay. So we're trying to break that barrier. So off camera, while we were on our break, <laughs> Mr. Vibert Romo, our cameraman, wanted to know about um, defrosting the baby milk or the breast milk that we were talking about earlier. What, what is the process of, of warming it up after defrosting? Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't want to be cool. When the mother pumps the milk, there's a bag. It's a, it's, it's a tight. You put the milk in there. You seal it. You label. Um, when you're ready for the milk, you take it out of the freezer. There's a maybe a, know, a container of hot water. You place that bag in there and allow it to naturally defrost. We don't recommend boiling it because there's nutrients you don't want to destroy. Right. Mm. Fat soluble, water soluble vitamins. Uh, now, you, you actually mentioned um, the calorie intake. Could you kind of elaborate on the calorie intake and how that's important for producing breast milk? Right. So you find that when um, you're breastfeeding, the calorie demand on the body is more. So normally, a lactating mother would need um, 400 to 600 more calories than you know, a regular individual. So we encourage persons to um, consume um, the right amount of food, but from all the food groups. So you get like nutrient dense. Uh, sometimes you find that persons would say, boy, I'm breastfeeding, so let me just go KFC and I need to eat mm -hmm. and, you know, just, just eat because I have to eat more mm -hmm. to, you know, to feed my baby. But it's a case of balanced feeds. And that's why it's always good to go to like your nutritionist or dietitian who can guide you because everybody's different. So the amount of calories that I may need breastfeeding may be different from what um, Michelle Pierre would need. So it's important to liaise with a professional to kind of guide you as to what you what your needs would be, and it translates it, make it easier for you. Because when you hear calories, you you know you don't want to get all consumed with why was this calorie business. So let's a professional put it into practical um, you know use of foods for you the portions and whatnot. So if I'm a mother, mm -hmm. um, suspend belief for a second that I could be a mother, um, mm -hmm. where do I find a, a, a nutritionist? So you have nutritionists in the community, right? So at your different health centers, there are nutritionists. You have nutritionists within the hospital. So Ms. Pierre is at St. Jude's and I'm at Millennium Heights Medical Complex. And then you also have nutritionists that do private work as well. Um, so you can always get that information once you liaise with the other nutritionists, they can always provide that information to you. Okay, as um, I don't, well, uh, you could answer this question. As a nutritionist, what are the sort of, I, I don't understand what the sort of test you could do to kind of decide um, person to person how their diet should change based on, I don't know, if is it their body type or their genetics? Okay, we do an assessment of the patient. We take all your anthropometric measurements, your height, your weight, consider your activity level. We do do a recall, a diet recall, because not everything that I may recommend that you can tolerate. So we get to know the person individually, and based on that, we determine the energy requirement for that person, which is what calorie intake is. Mm. Yeah. And is there a, a particular method you can use to improve the quality of your breast milk? Well, 
quality of milk equals quality of food consumed. So earlier we mentioned about the six food groups mm -hmm. that would help you create that quality you're looking for and the baby would receive that. Other than, let's say, the diets that you, that you undertake, would you say exercise or any, any other sort of method would be utilized to Definitely, exercise quality? is very important. Um, you do carry extra weight from carrying that baby. Um, get clearance from your doctor that it's okay to be active and you can go ahead and be active at least three times a week. You can start off with walking and then you can build up on that. Now you, um, well you both sort of touched on how stress levels can affect uh, breast milk. How can a mother reduce her stress level? Um, well again, I, like I mentioned earlier, the father's involvement. Um, exercise would help as well. Um, <coughs> relaxation techniques would help as well. Yeah, self-care. Self mm -hmm. So um, when you can get a break, so you, you know, give baby to daddy and then you can go and um, just relax. Some, some persons is just go to the beach and, you know, just get some time for yourself. Eventually, when you're able to leave the baby for a longer period of time, you can do things like go to a spa. Mm -hmm. um, because you really need to relax. Because if you don't relax and the stress hormones build up, it just it cuts your milk production. So it's really important to um, do the activities that you know that you enjoy relaxing. Some people it's meditating. Some people it's praying. They just need some quiet time. Um, so you need to do that. And sleep is also important as well. So I know that we're normally up feeding the baby, um, but once baby sleeps, then you go to sleep. So you could get you know the rest that you need in between, that's important. Mm. Another thing to touch on with the breast milk being hindered, alcohol and nicotine products, smoking can also hinder that. Mm -hmm. And caffeine too. Ca caffeine, yes. That's oh, right. Caffeine. You, you generally find a lot of mothers who would um, smoke or drink caffeine, like during that period? It happens. <laughs> yeah, you have some people that love coffee from yeah. before they were pregnant and um, you know, coffee can, can be addictive. So you find that when they do get pregnant, it's a, sometimes it's a challenge, it's a battle to um, just have to reduce that intake um, of, of, of caffeine. Um, and one other thing that I think would be good to note for the quality of the breast milk, um, fish. Fish is something that you have to limit the amount that you take in um, when you're breastfeeding because of the mercury content. So mm. you find that there are certain fish um, that are high in mercury, so we normally say avoid these. So that would be things like the king mackerel, um, you have the shark, mm -hmm. and um, the ma not the mahi mahi. Mahi mahi is moderate in, in, in mercury. The other one is the um, marlin. Mm. So marlin is high. So avoid marlin. Um, the other fish, you can consume it. So tuna is decent, salmon is, is decent, but limit it like twice a week, mm -hmm. two or three times a week, and you limit it 12 ounces maximum for, for a week. Yeah. Yeah. But if you have people who are pescatarian, so they don't eat, they don't eat chicken, then for those individuals, we'd probably suggest um, do maybe two or so two or three meatless days where you would do mushrooms and um, include more peas and beans You're to online. offset the fact that you would cut back on the fish during that time. Um, other than fish, is there anything that you should, you should try to stay away from? Because as, as you said, fish has a high mercury intake. What other, what other um, dietary adjustments would you have to make? I think we mentioned it. Yeah, that would be the, mm -hmm. the, the be, main thing, yeah, and along with alcohol and um, the caffeine. Oh, yeah, obviously mm -hmm. alcohol. All right, so these, these would be the things we tell people to, to avoid or limit. Okay. Um, now, we touched on it as well a little earlier, but um, I want to talk about the sort of very, other than work, and I guess the other stresses of life, I want to kind of touch on um, what the reasons would be for a mother to, to stop breastfeeding early. But we'll address that when we come back from the break. And this is our final break. So after this will be our final segment. Okay. You're watching Issues and Answers. Please stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. Breast milk is the gold standard that cannot be emulated. It is the perfect food for your baby. Breast milk provides antibodies, 
and protective factors which may fight against COVID-19 should your baby be exposed. Breastfeeding reduces the risk for premenopausal, breast and ovarian cancers. Breastfeeding is the most natural way to feed your baby. Breast milk provides all the nutrients your baby needs for the first six months of life. It requires patience. However, your baby deserves the best and it's worth the effort. Breastfeeding a baby up to 12 months improves jawbone development, thereby reducing misalignment of the teeth. Breast milk is baby's first immunization. It protects against viruses, bacteria, and also prevents some chronic diseases. If your child becomes sick with any illness, including COVID-19, it is very important that you continue breastfeeding. A woman with COVID-19 should be supported to breastfeed her baby safely. Hold her newborn skin to skin and share a room with her baby. After giving your baby only breast milk for the first six months of life, you can now slowly start introducing solid foods at the right textures. These include pureed vegetables, fruits, peas, and healthy cereals. For more information, call the Nutrition Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness at 468-5359. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. We're talking about the nutritional benefits of breastfeeding. Uh, now, before we went on break, I wanted to talk about reasons outside of work that a woman would start breast, well, stop breastfeeding earlier than the recommended six months. Uh, either one of you can address it. What about um, you, Ms. Chipke? There's um, There are some mothers, unfortunately, they have cancer and maybe going through chemotherapy. We don't recommend breastfeeding during that time, or if the mother is HIV positive, we don't recommend um, breastfeeding. So that can be one of the reasons some mothers might stop breastfeeding earlier than recommended. Yeah, do you find that there are certain other medical conditions that might actually affect production and um, no, mat no matter how much a mother tries, the baby sucks, and so if it's really, really difficult, um, then we may have no other choice mm -hmm. but to um, you know, find another option, but we still always try to encourage the breastfeeding as the main, the main option, yeah. yeah, exclusively. Okay, now another question that was brought to my attention again by our cameraman, who I suspect wants to be up here. Um, if for whatever reason the mother is not around or she can't produce milk, what are the, what are the options? Well, there's something called wet nursing. Um, I've seen it with families, like siblings would help the other sibling. Um, it's not so common outside of the home, the hospital. <laughs> I don't go too in depth with that, but it do exist and persons, provide the mother is healthy, you can, that, that's another option for you. So if you have two sisters or cousins, let's say that breastfeeding, are, are yeah. breastfeeding at the same time. And they're time, healthy, you yes, they can do that. Okay. Yeah. And I think worldwide you have um, some like milk banks and so yeah. where that exists in the U.S. They do that. Um, so you have mothers who, especially mothers who produce a lot of milk. So then they would, um, you know, freeze the milk, bag it and they send it over. It's tested and whatnot. And then it's an option for persons who choose that route. We don't really do it here, but that's another option that is done um, internationally. Mm -hmm. Other than that, the other option that we use is formula. So you mm -hmm. just, um, you know, give the baby the... You just replace it with formula. With so, but formula. But over but mm -hmm, go on. I thought you were uh, finishing mm -hmm. a point. Um, so, okay, we don't do it here, but overseas, how, how does it work exactly? Your mother just goes to a, a, a milk bank and she just produces the milk for the institution. Does, does she get paid for that or...? Some, yes, some person, they get paid. Some people get paid, some people don't eat. Mm. So, okay. But, uh, we're, yeah. Well, we're coming very close to the end of the program. Is there anything else that you want to add before we go off air? I think that um, mm -hmm. I'd probably just encourage mothers um, to exclusively breastfeed and that yes, it's going to be challenging, but it's also very rewarding. Um, so don't give up. 
despite the challenges, and especially if you're a working mother, um, that's the right choice to make once you have no other issues that's affecting you know, the process. And um, yeah, just be brave, be strong. And then there are a lot of mothers out there that are there to support you. Yeah. And anything else you want to add, Ms. Shippe? And just to reiterate to the point that because not because you're working, mm. you stop breastfeeding, you have the option of pumping. Mm. And the more you pump, the more breast milk will be delivered. So you have the option of freezing, the babysitter, whoever the caretaker is, can have access to that milk whenever the baby needs it. You don't have to stop. Okay, I want to thank you very much for coming on the program. I hope you can come on again for any other topic that's related to breastfeeding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am Jacques Kingston Compton. Please stay tuned to other programs from the, on the National Television Network and look for our content on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel.